everyone. Uh, my name is Sushte and welcome to episode 5 of the Flag Goes Up podcast. Uh, now I know we've been a, it's been a little longer than usual, but we are finally back to preview the finals of the UEFA Euro 2020, which will be in fact played tomorrow between Italy and England. And I've got obviously with me here Panu and Gurjot, just like we, you know, just like I had for the preview episode. And what a final it has, and what a tournament it has been, guys. I mean, full of full of emotions, full of shocks, full of excitement, full of surprises, and full of own goals. I mean, I mean, yeah. more own goals in this tournament than all the other on all the previous tournaments combined. So yeah, I mean, I mean, I think this has been the best UEFA Euro that I remember in recent memory. I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, of of course, as a tournament as a whole. With starting from the opening ceremony to the last kick of the semi-final match, or everything that has led to the build-up of this final, I mean, what are your thoughts regarding the tournament? Yeah, man, this has been one of the best Euros that I have watched. I have watched the 2012 and the 2016 one, and this Absolutely. one was indeed one of the best Euros I've seen. As you said, shocks, defeats, and yeah, I think yeah, this has been a terrific tournament. I am not a big inter. I am not a big uh, fan of international football, but this one, yeah, I have watched it throughout. So yeah, it has been yeah. great. Yeah, even me, even me. You know, obviously before the tournament began, and we discussed this in the preview episode as well. That you know, this would be one of those tournaments where with you watch without any anxiety, without any pressure, because you know you're not supporting anyone. You're watching it yeah. as a neutral, so you can you know just lay back and enjoy the football. But but how can you just enjoy football just by laying back? I mean, football. Yeah. That this is the thing about football. You know, drama when you least expect it, and football yeah, is what seriously. you know. Obviously, it will keep you on the edge. I mean, yeah. some some terrific matches and some unexpected matches, unexpected results yeah. that we saw. I mean, we discussed in the preview episode that that for example, you know, we we just talked about Hungary that they might die of hunger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But they gave a tough fight to all the three every, teams. Yeah, every yeah. every in team. Group. Yeah. Absolutely. And if, if Hungary were in a in a different group, I think they would have gone through as well. Similarly, yeah. you know, Switzerland eliminating France. I mean, oh, that amazing, was a big shock. Amazing, amazing football, amazing tournament, and yeah, yeah it's it, it's been great. But 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 let's get right into it now. I mean, obviously, it, uh, all the all I mean, we started with 24 teams. We are left with 22 now. Uh, with left with only two now, 22 have gone home. It's uh, it's Italy and England. So I mean, both of those te- both of these two teams have had you know uh, amazing tournaments so far. I think both of these teams have impressed equally. So yeah. uh, let's just get right into it. Let's just get let's just start with England. I mean, uh, I think obviously uh, you guys. I mean, I'm sure you would have prepared with uh, of, of the tactics and how the the teams have played so far in this tournament. So let's just start with the England. And let's just start with tactics. I mean, uh, how how do you think? Uh, what? Well, let's just give us uh, some uh, insights of how England have played so far. What uh, what have their tactics been uh, so far in this tournament? Obviously, they have played with back four, but they used back five in that one game against Germany as well. But how do you think they'll set up uh, against Ingl- against Italy tomorrow uh, in tomorrow's final? But 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 obviously, you know, obviously, how how has their uh, run been in the in the in the tournament so far? Yeah. As for I didn't, I didn't thought that England would reach the final. The draw was a bit lucky towards them, but yeah, yeah. they have they have played some fantastic football throughout the tournament, not conceding until the semi-finals. So yeah, the, their back four had been their back four has been really solid. Even when Tyron Mings came in, also he played very well. Maguire and Stone Maguire was very good in my opinion in the semi-finals. He was very good, very Absolutely. solid. Yeah, Absolutely. they pretty much played with four to three one as as you said throughout the whole tournament, barring that one game against Germany. Yeah, I was very much impressed with Calvin Phillips. He was very yeah. instrumental, I think, in England's way of Joke playing. Yeah, yeah, he was very good. I I haven't watched Le- that much Leeds throughout the whole Premier League season, but yeah, he no was also has. he was yeah. yeah he was very talked about that they were hyping. That he's a wonderful player. He's a good player. Now I saw the Euros, so yeah, he was very fun. He was fantastic. <laughs> As yeah, I would give Southgate credit for for for, uh, for taking England to the finals. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't thought. I also said that Southgate doesn't have it himself to take yeah. England to a major cup final, but yeah, he did very well. 
Sterling was Sterling was also one of the great surprises. He was the one scoring the goals for England. I thought that he wouldn't even start the tournament, but yeah, yeah, I did, never thought. I thought that Sancho would be the one that headlining the matches, but he didn't even see the grass on the ground. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah, man. For me, yeah, that was a big disappointment not seeing Sancho enough playing. So yeah, Declan Rice also had a good, very good tournament. So. Yeah, all in all, England did very well to reach the final, and I hope they don't win. I don't want it to come <laughs> home. I want it to go Rome. So, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. It's, it's, it's got to. I think it's 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 also have have got to do with the fact that they've played. Uh, I mean, uh, six of their seven games that they've played, it's it they played. Yeah, it at Wembley. Uh, yeah, that is a big major. Yeah, that is a big. They don't have. Even, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it might also give them the edge tomorrow, given the fact that the final is at Wembley. So I think it's got to do with that as well. Even Chiellini said that you know even yeah. the bench is 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 so good. I mean uh, exactly. Like yeah. Said, Jadon Sancho, he hasn't seen even an inch of grass, and he's on yeah. the bench. And, yeah, and uh, I forgot also, to mention my boy Bukayo Saka. Man, that guy is 19 and he's playing at an international level at the highest of levels. So I'm so you. I'm so proud of Bukayo, and uh, I hope he kicks on for Arsenal as well in the next season. So yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, and and obviously, yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, their bench strength has also is also pretty good. I mean, players like uh, they've got world class players in as, yeah. as you mentioned, Jadon Sancho, who who is on the bench. You know, they can rotate between Saka, Sancho, and and Grealish as well. I mean, obviously, yeah. I don't play Grealish as much as everyone else does, but yeah, because of Zach Efron. <laughs> yeah, would be wanting to see more of this English Zach Efron, but I think yeah. I, I mean, uh, other uh, a lot of people rate him, and given the fact that obviously yeah, Southgate rates him, you know, he's 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 this is he's one of the players who's been on the bench. And I think uh, the, the thing with England is that they've got a lot of versatile players, you know, players who can play yeah, multiple, multiple positions. Yeah, yeah they have a lot of them. Yeah, play on either of the wings. Mount can play as a number ten, mm. as a number eight as well. Calvin yeah. Phillips and Declan Rice, you know, obviously Rice knows that he has to sit between the two defenders, so two that defenders. he can move forward if he wants to. And obviously the wing backs as well, who you know, the full backs as well, who know that even if they both go forward, there there will be a three people protecting that. Yeah, uh, protecting them. Because yeah. of the fact that Rice sits between the two defensive midfielders. And and speaking about Italy now, I think Italy's tactics are also kind of similar. I mean, uh, England play four two three one, Italy play four three three. But the fact that uh, we we how we spoke about how Declan Rice sits between the two centre backs. For Italy, I think uh, Jorginho is the one who has been dictating yeah. the play, and I think he has been Italy's most. Yeah, that's a terrific Euros so man. I mean, yeah. I, I, he runs the whole game. He runs the whole game. You, he, he knows when he ha- when when they have to play quicker. He knows when they have to you know slow, slow down, down the game or cool down the game. So everything is going through Jorginho. So 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 I mean, how 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 what are Italy? How are how have Italy's tactics been? I think it has been pretty clear that they kind of want to play this possession football with the. Obviously, with the fact that they've got world-class defense, the only thing that Italy was lagging in major tournaments was their attack. I mean, they had never scored more than two goals in a match in a major tournament like a World Cup or the UEFA Euro, and they started their first group game with a three-nil uh, bashing of uh, Turkey. So how we had think- <laughs> in the previews, we had very wrong. <laughs> we, we made such I we mean, made very I, big predictions. It has that. to be it has to be one of the most embarrassing preview episodes yeah. so far. I mean, we yeah. could, I don't think we got much right in that except one or two. <laughs> yeah, things. but yeah, that is the beauty of football, man. Football never write the script before it is in front of you. That is yeah, what we say about clearly. football. Yeah, so so football so, is a yeah, funny so game, I mean, guys. Obviously, yeah. The group, <laughs> sometimes it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> everyone has everyone has a bad day at the office, and I think the preview was our bad day. I mean, obviously, <laughs> we did not get it entirely wrong, but we did get. I mean, we only get managed to get a few things right. So, yeah. so yeah, that's that's the that's the thing of the past. But now, speaking of Italy, now, I mean, now, what can we expect from Italy so far? And please, and uh, how do we? I mean, obviously, we 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 would we would want to break down their tactics and just to see how they play. But obviously, also and ha- also this and how do we expect Italy to set? You know, uh, to be set uh, in the final. How do you think Mancini would be setting Italy up for the final? Would he go with the same tactics or would he want to tweak a little? It's it's the final. I think both managers might overthink. Uh, so how do we? What do we say about Italy here? 
I think Mancini has said this. Uh, Italy side in a real Italian sense of way. They have a solid backline. We know Bonu- yeah. Bonucci and Kellini have been at the top of the game for about 10, uh, 11 years now. I remember yeah, I one... they, they must know each other better than their own wives. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. <laughs> I remember a quote from Mourinho that I think they should teach uh, defending at Harvard <laughs> University or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. That yeah, has yeah, absolutely. to be true for this tournament. I mean, absolutely. not only this tournament. Uh, uh, they have been good defenders for a while now, but they have got Absolutely. good players uh, alongside them. I think uh, Spinazzola Around would him. be a big miss for Italy because yeah, he Spinazzola had been a menace terrific. on that left yeah. uh, left back position. I think uh, the, he had been the player with the highest of speed uh, in this tournament, so he'll be a big miss, surely. But the main thing, I mean, uh, the main uh, 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 attack or the main, you know, uh, positive for Italy in this Main tournament has to be their midfield. Yeah. Uh, they, they have a really balanced midfield and every player knows what he has to do. Jorinho, you know, he sits between the defenders and dictates the play from the middle of the field. And uh, you have uh, uh, then Virati, who has Virati. his tough tackling style and it's really hard to take the ball off him as ball well. So, he has accumulated the most tackles in this tournament. So, he'll know what he has to do. And you have Barella, who is the, I think, the engine of this, real engine of this Italy side. He'll yeah. get rampaging he's runs of the, uh, uh, up and down the field for the throughout the game. And he'll be a real menace for the defenders because he'll try to attack the box uh, late on and uh, get uh, at the end of the balls. But uh, I think I've been really impressed with the way Federico Chiesa has played in this tournament. Yeah. I don't yeah. think he had been talked about enough and I don't think Absolutely. he will be talked about enough even after the tournament is over because he doesn't have, doesn't have that hype around him, I guess. But when you mm-hmm. see him, when he gets on the ball, you think that th- something might happen. Um, might happen. Either he'll take yeah. a shot or he'll play a pass, but you get that feel that uh, when he's on the ball, he'll uh, get on the edge of something and uh, yeah, something positive will happen. So, yeah, lift yeah. you off your seat, man. I think the main, think main think... Uh, piece of uh, challenge for Italy will be to get Chiraway Mumble into the play a bit more because he has been yeah. a bit, I mean, unorthodox with the way he has mm-hmm. played. I think the I don't even think he has uh, got too many, uh, too many goals. So Insigne will yeah, be. I think just the one. I yeah. Yeah. So that will be the only I think uh, weak link for Italy side. But they've got a good squad around him, so he Absolutely. can. Help them. And, and, and and to add to that, guy, uh, Federico Chiesa point because the fact that a lot of people you know uh, want in for if, if we talk about England, the only reason why Sterling is starting is because he makes runs off the ball and whereas players like players who are around him like you know mason mount and uh, if we talk if we say you know uh, phil, phil foden on the right who started the initial two games they like to receive the ball on receive their the ball, yeah. and yeah. similarly similar go similar thing goes for italy their front three as well don't don't make those runs behind their lines to receive those balls they like the balls at their feet and the only reason why uh, you know why we feel that he, uh, you know, when Chiesa has the ball, something might happen is because he, you know, makes those runs between the lines. So Italy get that cert- certain option that okay, Jorginho will mm. will play those balls, you know, behind the lines because he will look to find Chiesa. So I think that is one of the reasons why he has been, uh, uh, why he might turn out to be the trump card for Italy, given the fact that obviously he might not start, but given the fact that a lot of these matches, you know, a lot of uh, majority of the quarterfinals and obviously both the semifinals went it went into extra time, there is a very high chance that this final as well this might will, go yeah. into extra time. And then Kaizia, you know, off the bench, he, you know, might be able to create something. And uh, yeah, I think, so this is pretty much it. I think about the tactics, I think uh, we, we figured out how both these teams like to play. Uh, both of these teams like to keep the ball, you know, players like Mount, you know, come deep to receive the ball. For England and then carry it forward. Similar thing goes for Sterling as well. Even Kane sometimes drops so deep to receive the ball. Similar thing goes for Italy. Jorginho likes to keep the ball at his feet yeah. and dictate the players around him. So I think it's going to be a real, uh, a real tactical battle and real fight for the ball. Uh, so as far as the tactic go, tactics goes. But now for the uh, XG nerds, I mean, 
what do we how do we talk about the expected goals here i think uh, i think italy uh, italy's ex- italy have won the expected goals battle in all of their matches except that one match against spain, spain where, obviously, yeah. where obviously their expected goals against was more than the ex- expected goals that they would have created but england on the other hand i think uh, they their expected goals i think their ex- yeah. more more impressively their expected goals against has been has been much better i mean i don't think they have uh, created uh, they have uh, conceded more than 0.6 x xga in any of their matches so far so why yeah they have just conceded the single yeah they have conceded just the single goal at that to a beauty from yeah, dams guard yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that, that they, were, set piece. Yeah. they haven't conceded an open play goal yet so so why do you think i mean is it because of the fact that they keep the ball so well or is it because of the fact that rice is there to protect maguire and stones or because of the fact that calvin phillips also comes deep to protect yeah yeah that that is the reason calvin phillips and declan rice they just both said calvin phillips yeah he makes that the runs but he's not that much forward thinking player he's all, he also just sits with declan rice and yeah and as for the defense the stones and maguire all we always slate maguire for being slow but yeah but Maguire is a decent defender. He's more than a decent defender, and Stones also have had a terrific season. Back of such a good season, so and Walker and Shaw also. Shaw, in my opinion, Shaw was the best left back in England in the Premier League last season. I mean, yeah, what more we can say about Kyle Walker? <laughs> no one can outpace him. So yeah, they are their their spine is very solid. The spine of England is very solid, and for the fact and fact that Pickford hasn't haven't been tested yet. He hasn't. Have, was tested that much by other team no shots just tippy tapping around the box so yeah that's why i think they have had, had a solid defense for the tournament and also i think uh, i mean this is mason mount I, i mean he plays he has played in that number 10 position so far in the tournament but he has the most tackles and most interceptions from uh, uh, you know like in this english squad i mean no player even neither uh, declin the tournament his uh, uh, i mean his defensive contributions have been uh, really really you know impressive for for this england team as well so i think we can we, we've kind of figured out why they have kept so many clean sheets and only conceded as goals yeah. just from a set piece and haven't conceded from open play because of the fact that all three of uh, rice uh philips and mason mount you know contribute hugely towards contribute. the defensive side of mm-hmm. of uh, this england team as well and, and speaking of italy i think italy also had a great tournament the uh, against i mean it's, it's it was only against spain there where, where they were not able to create much i mean uh, spain yeah, i think yeah italy, italy got lucky in that semi final against spain spain created lo- lot more chances than italy <laughs> italy got lucky in that match Yeah, even I think the Spain's biggest uh, only downfall for Spain, only downside for Spain in this tournament was the fact that they could not cash in on their expected goals. Yeah. I, mean, they, 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 I think obviously they accumulated a lot of xG, but obviously I mean could not convert it. So speaking of the final now, how do you think uh, these two teams are going to fare out on their expected goals? Yeah, I think that <clears throat> uh, England would create more chances. i think yeah because of the players that they have i think england would be the one leading the xg race italy would be the one sitting deep and looking for counter attacking to create more chances so yeah i think england will have pretty much most of the ball so yeah do you think that this uh, england side would be england defense would be ready oh. for italy considering they don't really have uh, faced up tough big so, team Manu, in the whole tournament yeah yeah i know that there will this is the big team this is the big biggest team that they have faced throughout the tournament and yeah it will be it will be a tough match but yeah but i still think england would have most of the ball like that spain also had most of the ball against italy mm. they they had around about 60 to 65% possession throughout the whole match so i think yeah, england will have most of the ball the other yeah, point is what i said italy will try to look for counter attacking football they will get the balls out to the wingers and senia also have also has a great tournament so yeah, i was pretty much impressed with in senia as well so yeah i think 
that's going to be pretty much it yep so i think uh, all right guys so i think that is uh, i mean what we think how the expected goals is going to play out i think we might we we might see england creating more uh, but it's obviously you know create creating chances is one thing and then you know converting them scoring to goals, is another so yeah whoever, you know yeah whoever you know uh, cashes in on their expected goals will obviously you know have the upper hand in the in the in the in the finals and obviously Uh, there are all you know possibilities it could go into the in, into extra time it could go to penalties as well it might go it might be over in 90 minutes yeah i But see yeah, i see penalties it oh. i see it going to penalties man <laughs> so do you and think it, i mean if if you see, if you see it going to penalties do you think we are going to have a score draw or or do you think it's going to be goalless until 120 i think it will be goalless <laughs> Yeah, it will be goalless till one twenty, and <laughs> Italy is gonna snatch it in the penalties. <laughs> okay, yeah, fair enough. All right. So I mean, obviously, we'll come to the predictions later. I yeah. think that will obviously be the last segment of it. We'll come to predictions later. But I think yeah, we so I think we figured out how uh, I mean how the both the both these teams like to play, given the on the basis of their tactics and obviously uh, how has how their expected goals has been so far this tournament. but yeah i mean uh, let's let's now talk about the road to the final obviously i mean some would argue that england have had an easier run than compared to italy given the fact that england also you know played majority of their matches at home obviously italy played their uh, initial three group stages at uh, group stage matches at home but obviously then they have to travel to england as well you know to play the quarter final and the se- i think the semi final as well so so uh, let's start with england's uh, road to the final i mean uh, how, what with what what aspect uh, aspect of this england england side has impressed you guys so far yeah i think yeah england in the group stages we all predicted predicted that they will sail through the sort of group they had yeah i was pretty much i was impressed with england when they played ukraine and denmark denmark i thought i thought denmark should have come out a little bit more express themselves on the field they just wanted they just they just came to go to take the match to penalty so i wanted more from denmark but on the other hand england also played very well they showed their resilience they went 1-0 down and came back to win the match although the penalty was i don't know a little bit dodgy that sterling got but yeah all the luck that england have been having throughout the tournament that good disallowed goal of lampard <laughs> we can go way back so yeah yeah so i think that england yeah they they've had a easier run in but you have to beat what's in front of you and they did beat what's in front of them and pretty much comprehensively barring that denmark game i thought they it was their test of their resilience and they, they came out on top so yeah i think that's pretty much it i think uh, south gate was you know criticized a lot i think in the group stages when when you know <laughs> i did that that as well <laughs> i mean even after the tournament as well you know uh, when when it started you know they won their first game just by a goal to nil i mean sterling scored yeah. that goal and then the second game against scotland went was nil nil even yeah. the third game they just won one nil so i think south gate was criticized a little because of the fact that you know people might my people thought that he was playing too defensive you know they wanted him to give more chances to english english uh, zack afron but obviously he preferred sterling over him so but but then after that you know i think england just they they, they just burst into life beating germany yeah. in nil then beating ukraine 4-0 obviously mm-hmm. denmark gave them a little fight but then i think uh, if you if you leave group stages aside i think uh, post the group stages from the round of 16 we saw a completely different england england side you know who were scoring goals for one who were creating chances as well obviously they yeah. were defensively solid at back then as well so but but i think after group stages they just burst into life so what do you think changed for england i mean what what changed from the group stages to the knockout stages yeah these international matches there are they are very tight we have seen all world cup as well in euro zero these international matches are tight they do they do they just don't go all out and attack like what we are used to see in the premier league and in the champions league yeah teams don't play international football like like but like that and as you said that yeah after the group stage group stage matches against scotland was one where everyone was you should have gone with grealish people were 
saying I was also one rooting for Grealish, but you clarified that point perfectly. That Grealish is also the one type of player that likes to travel with the ball. Foden is similar to that. So you can't just Mount have three. Similar. Yeah, Mount is also. You can't have three players who just travel with the ball. No one making the runs. Kane also de- drops back. The goal that the equalizer that England scored was a great example. He just put the ball for Saka, and Saka was Saka also was there to make runs. England yeah. players, there are not many players in England that can make runs, but li- unlike Saka and Sterling. So yeah, mm-hmm. for me, yeah, yeah, they played very well. Yeah, I forgot to mention the Germany game. I was very impressed with England how they played against Germany, just going three at the back. With them just going toe to toe and coming out on top, so yeah, the so yeah, I was very impressed with England after the group stages, man. Group stages. Yeah, but and but contrary to England, I think Italy was the team that impressed us the most during the group stages. I think they scored goals for fun. Uh, three yeah. in their first two games, obviously beat uh, Wales one nil, but I think their their performance after the group stages, you know, wasn't as impressive. As it was in the group stages. I mean, in the knockout stages, they weren't. They didn't. Did not look as impressive as they did in the group stages. Uh, mm-hmm. So, so, so why? So I think it. And obviously, it is contrary to England. England didn't look good in group stages, but in the knockout stages, they burst into life. Italy were just bossing everyone around uh, in the group stages. But in the knockout stages as well, they had uh, the upper hand in some of the matches. But you know, uh, it, it didn't. I mean, obviously. The, the the way they controlled the group stage matches, the con- that that control was lacking a little in the knockout stages. So so obviously one reason could be the fact that they played teams like Belgium, Spain, uh, in the group stages, which are no pushovers, you know, like uh, Ukraine or Denmark. So so why why do you think that is? And I think uh, what I mean, why do you think Italy? You know, we did not feel Italy playing so good in the knockout stages as compared to uh, the group stages. Yeah, I think Italy were uh, really good in the group stages. First of all, uh, the only thing yeah. Italy have been criticized for a long, a long time has been their inability to score goals. Absolutely. In this tournament, we have seen in Italy side, I think who have scored the most goals in any tournament. I think they would have played. I don't think they would have scored more goals than they have done in this Euros. And uh, the first, I think Austria got them uh, took uh, uh, gave them a tough fight. They uh, had to go till the extra time to win that game two one. And uh, I think uh, that the Belgium game they took Belgium with a bit of a surprise. I think they were all over them from the off, and uh, they scored that with five two goals and. Uh, later on, they did uh, uh, set up deep, and uh, Belgium did have chances to draw the game, but they managed to hold a line for that time. And, and I think they got lucky with the Spain game. Spain were all over yeah. them, and uh, I think uh, it was a moment of individual brilliance from Keza that they ended up scoring the goal, and uh, Spain had a lot of chances to finish the game off. Uh, I mean, even after Murata scored, Oriazabal Uri- had a great chance to finish the game uh, in 90 minutes, but I think he missed that one. So, uh, yeah. Italy have been a bit uh, unorthodox in the knockout stages, but they have faced great teams, I think uh, we could call. Spain side, I think the Spain side had scored the most goals in the whole of the Euro. So, they gave them a a fight and uh, England, I don't think on the other end, have faced sides of the quality of Belgium and Spain. So, uh, it'll be tough for them and and I think the main, I think it is a bit of a cliche to call it, but I think the game will be won in the middle of the field and uh, it'll be interesting to notice how the midfield duo of uh, Kelvin Phillips and uh, Declan Rice handle the midfield trio of Italy. Yeah, absolutely. Now, obviously, I think uh, we figured out. We've, we've spoken about the tactics. Uh, we've uh, spoken about uh, about their expected goals. We've spoken about how they have uh, you know performed throughout the tournament. Obviously, these two teams will meet in the final, and obviously, you know, we can only speculate about how the battle is going to be. Given the fact that you know uh, this is, I think uh, Southgate might try this. Given the fact that you know Jorginho will be controlling the Italy controlling the game for Italy. Everything will be going through him. He will, you know, he's one of those players who likes to speak 
constantly speak uh, you know to his teammates and you know tell uh-huh. or you know shout orders at them that you know you want you have to make this run or where to pass the ball when when he wants to receive the ball he will you know shout and ask for the ball and given the fact that england have a player who in mason mount who is playing in in in, in that number 10 position uh-huh. the chelsea teammate so do you think that mason mount because of his high energy because of the fact that he contributes defensively to the team so much do you think that you know southgate might you know ask mason mount to to kind of man mark jorginho not give him to press him as soon as he gets the ball to not give him enough space to look up and 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 play those passes do you think do you think this is one of the things that gareth southgate might look at yeah i think that this he should just man mark he should ask mount to man mark jorginho but as you said everything from it league goes through jorginho and i will give you an example at the 20 that fa cup final that arsenal played chelsea granite jacka did the same sort of job he just sat on jorginho he didn't let jorginho dictate play and make make easy passes like to just make the play go on so yeah i think yeah ball, yeah, yeah just to disrupt him not let him make the passes that he usually makes easily just turning him so yeah i think he should and mason mount also would provide a great knowledge to southgate regarding jorginho that sort of play the kind of things that jorginho does on the pitch so i think yeah that would be one of the tactics that i think southgate should go that man mark jorginho because everything that italy does goes through him so yeah i think gareth southgate should look into it <laughs> okay yeah fair enough so uh, so what do we guys think i mean so um, who do you think it's, it's going to be you know the the players the player uh, for their respective teams who will you know who for on 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 whom more, on whom both of these teams would rely on so who do you think england who would be england's most important player to look out for in the tournament uh, in the final of course uh, i i have couple of them but yeah but Uh, the first i think sterling would be very important he has been scoring the goals he is in rich vein of form so i think yeah and i think harry kane as well because he does this job very he does this that he just drops inside in the midfield and looks for the wingers to pass it through the that the what i said the classic example of that equalizer okay. that just scored yeah. against denmark he just Absolutely. put one for saka and saka just lasted across the goal so i think yeah kane and Sterling would be the one that would I hope that they don't score. I want England to lose so bad, but yeah, I think <laughs> them two will be the one to look out for from England side, in my opinion. And 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 what about Italy? I think uh, I mean uh, majority of the people would say Jorginho, but given the fact that it might go into extra time and that you know in extra time anything can happen, and obviously players not 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 entirely based on the starting eleven it could be someone off the bench as well who might just make yeah. because of the fresh legs and everything so who do we who do we think uh, I, uh, you know it is uh, main player and the most important player is going to be for the final italy i think the italy side have been uh, much better as a team as compared to their individual performances but for me in the final they'll i think look up to insignia a bit for creating things in the final third cause they have got uh, their midfield is set they don't need anyone else up there but yeah. immobile is a weak link up there so i think he'll need to step up his game uh, and uh, in the okay. midfield uh, of course you can take any player out of the three i think virati will be the most i think important player for them cause he can go Toe to toe with the English midfielders because he has got that hard tackling style as well. So he'll complement those English players in that field. Yeah. What so about you? Like what do you team? think? What do you think? Yeah. I mean, from I the, know, both I of the team, from both of the team, <laughs> we want England and Italy as well. I mean, I don't know. I mean, think for England, uh, I think it could be. Uh, uh, maybe i don't know if 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 i'm right or wrong but it might be you know uh maybe harry maguire given the fact that he has he he is a he's a decent he's more than a decent defender but it's 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 just that it's 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 his his uh, you know passing range as well which is uh, pretty good so uh, given the fact that you know when when it is when you know obviously it will be tight in midfield 
you know neither of the midfielders might get enough space and time to to look up look out for a pass or to create a pass and then you know obviously the ball playing central defender central defenders have to take initiative yeah, and they have to step stones, out yeah both stones and maguire can do that i mean if yeah. if, if if john stones is playing in a pep guardiola team you know that his ball playing ability is second to none because he likes he have, he likes every player of his to be a to be good on yeah. the ball even his goalkeeper yeah. given the yeah, and if john clearly stones, <laughs> yeah, and 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 even Harry Maguire can you know play those balls. So I think it could be not only Harry Maguire; it could be John Stones as well. If Rice, Phillips, and Mount are you know congested, you know in a, you know trapped in that midfield, they don't have enough space to pass the ball or look up to the ball. It might be Stones or Maguire who might play those diagonal balls either to the wing backs or to the wingers or directly up forward to Harry Kane. As far as Italy is concerned, I think uh, it, it it I mean. I, as as we said in the in the beginning i think everything runs through jorginho so it might be you know given the fact that jorginho might be the most important player for italy but obviously southgate is well aware of that and if he tries to put mount to man mark jorginho uh, i think their most important player uh, you know it, it i think it will might be insigne or 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 federico caizia as we speak as we said because yeah. sometimes it happens is that those three players the front three or as as we said everyone likes to receive the ball on their feet so they just get in each, in each other's way so you need one player to make those runs forward and the runs I yeah think full backs even spinners i would have said spinner spinner zola if he were yeah, he, has been been terrific, terrific. Huh? he has been you know making those runs from left back to left back and forward we might we don't know if emerson might be able to do that but any player who can make those runs behind the ball behind the behind england's defense for italy might as well be their uh, key player and yeah. as far as the tactics is concerned i think uh, yeah england might have edge on the possession i think italy might want to sit back a little because yeah, defense yeah, is something down. that they that they do really well akelini and bonucci are experienced enough to soak yeah. up the pressure uh, and 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 very one very important stat i think majority of this majority of the people know that uh, gian luigi donnarumma italy's goalkeeper who has been playing for four or five years for italy now has never conceded more than one goal mm. in a game in his entire career so he is yeah, a great goalkeeper man managed to score two goals there are 90% chances that they might win the final uh, yeah and he made some terrific space, uh, saves against belgium against spain as well and uh, see, this is one of the reasons why italy you know although they conceded their expected goals against uh, expected goals against against spain was 1.7 uh, but they only conceded one is obviously because of the fact that spain's poor finishing but jona ruma has been you know uh, amazing in 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 goal for them uh-huh. as as i said he has run, he has never conceded a single goal a uh, more than a more than one goal in any game that he has played for italy so that that this stat might just you know uh, might favor italy in the final as well so i mean i think this is what i think uh, for uh, who their main players is going to be and how both these both these teams are going to set up england might enjoy more of the ball italy might try to soak up the pressure look mm-hmm. look up for counter attacks and how this uh, but but yeah i mean this is what are what are, what we are predicting but the way this tournament has gone so far I won't be surprised if our predictions go wrong. <laughs> that, that's that's just football for you. So that's just yeah, football man. for you. Anything can happen. But obviously, I mean, uh, even if our predictions go wrong, because uh, I mean, uh, with the, the kind of drama that this game offers, I don't, I don't think no and any other sport yeah. can. But yeah, we will have to make predictions for the final. So uh, so let's just start with with, with I mean with, with, let's just start with the draw. And you said obviously that you see yeah. this going to penalties with a goalless yeah. draw for 120 minutes. Like do you stick by it? Yeah, yeah, I pretty much stick by it. I don't think any team would score, and it will remain <laughs> goalless till the penalties. And Italy will win four to one penalties. <laughs> oh, I said it. <laughs> Is that's that a, that? that's a super detailed that's uh, a really yeah. detailed prediction yeah <laughs> yeah man i don't, I don't want, want england to win man i don't I want mean, england I mean, to we win we don't want, want it to come home line. <laughs> we want that to go wrong <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely i mean uh, we, we all predict the score lines but i think this is super detailed even yeah. the penalty shoot out uh, score line has been laid out yeah. for us uh, what about panu <laughs> when do you think do you also uh, agree with the fact that it might go to penalties or 
uh, you know but we'll, we'll we'll try to you know be you know we'll try to bring out more episodes for you more frequently at least one episode a week i mean this is what we try for obviously it, it it's it's not always been possible for all of us to be together you know to 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 record all these episodes but yeah but we'll give it our best uh, uh, you know in the future going forward try to bring out episodes on transfers uh you know uh, uh, i think uh, i think yeah this is pretty much it i think the next 30 days are going to be focused heavily on transfer on season transfers as well a lot of uh, clubs have appointed their managers at you know <laughs> yeah, finally <laughs> yeah finally uh, everton have rafa benitez now uh, crystal palace have patrick vieira i mean yeah. all parkway fans would be watching crystal palace matches as well uh, and not really. nuno esperito santo has gone to tottenham hotspur i mean, i but we have the best nuno in, nuno in town bro we have the best <laughs> nuno in town yeah even arsenal has i confirmed that this left that from benfica uh, we have the best nuno, of, nuno in london of, yeah yeah a lot of every lot of lot of things are going around in the tournament and as soon as this uh, euro final is over and obviously you know we will be talking about the recent developments that have happened across clubs across Europe, be it the managerial appointment for the recent transfer, Sergio Ramos has gone to PSG. That will take yeah. that, that will take some time to get used to. But I mean, we can go on and on. Longer and on. for Barney. You can never get used <laughs> yeah. to that man. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was yeah, feeling absolutely. weird seeing Ramos in a PSG shirt, man. <laughs> I mean, every one of us was feeling weird. I mean, you you've seen one player play in white for 16 years, and then all of us are yeah. so used to purple. You would feel weird. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that's it. Pretty much it. We could go on and on about football. I think this is one of the topics we cannot shut up about. Uh, exactly. so, but yeah, so I think, but yeah, we have to. This episode has to come to an end. So yeah, I mean, we, I hope you liked our analysis of the final of both the two teams. We've given out our predictions. Uh, all three of us think that Italy will win. But yeah, never write script before it is written for you in football. That's how it goes. Uh, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, we'll try to bring out more frequent episodes for you as soon as we can. At least we'll try for at least one episode, one one episode a week on transfers, on everything that goes around football, because this is a podcast about all things football. So that's it yes. from me, Banu and Gurjot. Uh, we hope to see you soon. And until then, guys, uh, please stay home, stay safe. See you soon.